This is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones, and we're going to look at the glorified bodies of the born-again believers that we're going to receive at the rapture. If you are a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, you have the opportunity to reign with Jesus Christ as a king yourself on the earth. 2 Timothy 2.12 If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And that is a reign, not your salvation. Now the child of God is walking around clothed in a body of flesh uh, that looks just like everybody else. However, at the rapture of the church, when the Lord comes back to get the saints, the child of God will shed this natural body and reveal the inner man. This will be a much bigger change than Clark Kent changing into Superman. In Ephesians 3.16 it says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That inner man is going to bust out and you'll be able to see the saint of God in his complete redemption. In Romans 8.23 it says, And not only they but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. You won't have to get angry like the Hulk to get this supernatural body. Actually, you'll get happy when it happens. And the features of this glorified body are counterfeited by the superhero false gods of our day. At the rapture of the church, you will leave your clothes behind and put on new ones, just like any good superhero. You probably won't be in a phone booth when this happens. Uh, the Lord could come at any moment. You might be at work. You might be in the middle of traffic. You might be flying a plane, and out of nowhere, the rapture takes place. You'll be gone, and all that will be left behind of you is what the world put on you. Your clothes, your jewelry, false teeth, and glasses. You won't need those glasses anymore. And Luke twenty four twelve, you see that Jesus Christ left his clothes behind, and when he resurrected in his glorified body, that's what your body will be like. And just like any good superhero puts on a superhero costume, you will also change clothes when you get into your superhuman body. In Revelation 19.14, it says, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Now, I don't know if our white robes will have anything written on them, but I know the Lord Jesus Christ robe has something written on it in revelation 19 16 it says and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords maybe you'll have an s on your chest for servant of the most high god but these clothes will reveal to the enemy ahead that you are righteous and that you are on the winning side and you will strike fear into the eyes of the enemy revelation 19 8 and to her was granted that she, be, she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. The closest you get to having a superhero costume in this life is when you put on the Lord Jesus Christ. In your day-to-day -day walk, you need to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 13, 13 through 14 says, Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. But at the rapture, the new man is going to bust out, and you're going to be changed. Our vile body will be fashioned like unto his glorified body. So you're going to get new clothes. And you know me by my earthly name. Just like people on the fantasy superhero movies in comics, they knew Peter Parker, Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne, and all the superheroes by their birth name. However, those guys got a new name. Spider-Man, Superman, Batman. But in your new body, you'll have a new name. The Lord is known to change the names of the saints. Paul used to be Saul. Abraham used to be Abram. 
uh, your name will be a used to be name. The tribulation saints that overcome get a new name as it's revealed in Revelation 2.17. So it seems likely that we'll get a new name. In Revelation 2.17, it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. So that's going to be awesome to have a name that the Lord himself gave you. And almost every superhero you see has a headquarters. Some of them are rich, like Bruce Wayne and the Black Panther. And in your new body, you will have a mansion. Uh, some believe the mansions refer to the new body itself, and it might be. Uh, but your, new, your body now is referred to as a temple. So it isn't far-fetched. as It says in 1 Corinthians 6.19, it says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Also in 2 Corinthians 5.2, it says, For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. So our glorified body is referred to as a house, but I believe we are still getting a mansion. John 14.2, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And 2 Corinthians 8.9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. So I believe we're going to have a mansion. I believe we're going to be rich. That's going to be our, our headquarters. We're going to be way more uh, wealthy, have much more material possessions than any of these uh, false god superhero counterfeits. And I couldn't even imagine what would be in the mansion. I'm sure I'll have my weapon with me at all times, my sharp two-edged sword, as the Bible calls it in Hebrews 4.12. It reveals the Word of God is our sword. Hebrews 4.12, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's my sword. Now Thor has his hammer, but my weapon is much, much stronger. Jeremiah twenty three twenty nine is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Okay, our word is a sword, it's a hammer, and it's much stronger than any other weapon, uh, fictional or non-fictional weapon. The human torch can burn his enemies, but the word is like as a fire. At the second coming, it will be in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, according to 2 Thessalonians 2.8, as the Lord has a sharp two-edged sword that's going to come out of his mouth, in Revelation 19.15, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. At the second coming, Jesus comes back on a white horse. We come back with him on white horses. And you may not even know how to ride a horse right now, but you will in your glorified body. Revelation 19, 14, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So these horses are like the supernatural horses of fire that took Elijah up. Batman has the Batmobile. The Knight Rider has his motorcycle, whatever you call it. But we have a supernatural white horse. We will, be, we will be behind the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the Bible describes how our glorified body will be like His glorified body. First John 3, 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. So we shall be like Him. Philippians 3, 20 through 21. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So this vile body that I'm in will be fashioned like unto his glorious body. And I don't believe we will all be identical. Because as it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 41, there is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So one star differeth 
from another star in glory. The Lord makes everything unique. I believe we will all look different and have different personalities, but united in the Word of God and what the Bible says, it will be our final authority, just like it is now. For a lot of Christians, it's not the final authority. But when we get to heaven, that will be the final authority. We will be completely united in what the Word of God says. We will know exactly the right doctrine. All the doctrines that I'm wrong on now, I'll be right on then. And the ones that you're wrong on now, you'll be right on then. We'll, we'll be in perfect unity on what the Bible says. Now, Joe chapter 2 really gives great details on what our glorified bodies will be like. And a lot of people don't believe Joel chapter 2 refers to the uh, saints coming back with the Lord at the second coming. And that's all right because, you know, even if it doesn't refer to that, the details I'm going to give about the glorified body are still true. Now, this chapter describes the Lord's army right after they come from the third heaven. The glorified body can space travel. And that's true whether or not you believe Joel 2 refers to us coming back with the Lord in our glorified bodies because we know at the rapture we're going to be going straight up to the third heaven. So the, the fact that the saint can space travel, I mean, that's a, you know, th there's no disagreement there with anybody. In Joel 2 verse 2 it says, A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong there hath not ever been the like neither shall there be neither shall be any more after it even to the years of many generations so look at the setting the second coming is a day of darkness and gloominess it's just like when batman goes after the enemy it is usually dark and gloomy in gotham city he comes out at the thief like a thief Joel 2, 3, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. So fire in front of them, and fire behind them, and the fire can't hurt them. They can handle the flames better than the human torch, better than any superhero that's invincible when it comes to flames, or has its own flames. Uh, Joel 2, for the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. So the lone ranger and the night rider have nothing on the transportation of the saints at the second coming who come back on supernatural white horses of fire. Verse 5, like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array, the second coming is going to be a terrifying experience for the people on this earth the sound of the coming army is enough to terrify the enemy verse 6 before their faces before, before their face the people shall be much pained all faces shall gather blackness they shall run like mighty men faster than the flash they shall climb the wall like men of war better climbers than peter parker the spider-man and they shall march everyone on his ways and they shall not break their reins Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. So you can call them supermen. If anything, the sword, when they fell on it, would just bend backwards. Verse 9, they shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run up on the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in like the window at the windows like a thief. Like Spider-Man running to and fro in the city, climbing up on the wall, the houses, and entering into the windows. The earth shall quake before them, just like they're the Hulk or something. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? So that is a great picture of the saints, the future kings, coming back with the Lord, the king of kings at the second coming. Now look at 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, 
but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So any saint who has already died will have their soul coming back with the Lord at the rapture. Their soul will meet their body that will come up out of the grave. The body will be changed and be incorruptible. Death will no longer be a threat to their body. It is an incorruptible, glorified body. Now, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty three, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. If you're alive at the rapture, your body will be changed from the mortal body you're in now into an immortal body, the kind of body that man wants. And you see, all these people who almost worship the body, they exercise, they take pills, they eat right, and they, they try to get the perfect body. And the crazy scientists and rich men want to obtain an immortal body through technology. But this won't work either. You're going to have to get saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will one day get the superhuman body that you desire. 1 Corinthians 15, 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. No more death in your new body. You'll be invincible. There is no villain that could come and take your powers or kill you. Now, if we are going to get a new body like Jesus Christ, then we can look at details about what Jesus did in his glorified body, and our glorified body will have those same abilities. In John twenty twenty six, it says, And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. So Jesus went through solid objects. He went through shut doors. So in your glorified body, you can travel straight through solid objects. In Luke 24, Jesus Christ was able to make himself known to people or unrecognizable to people in his glorified body. In Luke 24, 31, it says, And their eyes were opened and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. So at first that he was unrecognizable. Then he made himself recognizable and then vanished. So he vanished out of their sight. He appears and disappears whenever he wants. This is also done uh, much easier than any hero that you've seen uh, counterfeit this, like the invisible man. But the Lord's body was a flesh and bone body that you could touch. And he said in Luke 24, 39, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. So our new body will be a flesh and bone body that can be touched. We'll have the mind reading. I believe it, Professor X from X-Men can do the mind reading thing. We'll be able to do that in our glorified bodies. Uh, Jesus did it before his glorified body. In Matthew 9, 4, it says, And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore thank ye evil in your hearts. We will probably, probably be able also to communicate through telekinesis. I'll be able to think something. You'll know what I'm thinking. And we can talk to each other through our thoughts in our glorified bodies. The Lord Jesus ate food in his glorified body. In Luke 24, 41 through 43, it says, And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and honey and of and honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. So you'll eat just for the pleasure of it. Not to mention all the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding you're going to have in your glorified body. Many superheroes are known for being geniuses. When you get your glorified body, you're going to know more than you could imagine. You'll know the Word of God backwards and forwards. You're going to know the deep and secret things. Why are things the way they are? In 1 Corinthians 13, 9 through 12, it says, For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. That which is perfect has come is the Lord Jesus. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I, came a when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. So talk about 
a superhuman mind. Spider-Man has Spidey sense, but what we have will be much greater than that. Captain Marvel, a comic book character invented back in the 1940s, also known as Shazam, is said to have the wisdom of Solomon, and the saint's glorified body will greatly excel the wisdom of Solomon. As a child of Lord King Jesus, you will have the mind of Christ. And Jesus said about himself in Luke 11.31, A greater than Solomon is here. Revelation 4.6 and Revelation 15.2 mentions a sea of glass. This sea of glass will be traveled through by the saints and glorified bodies at the rapture after a short space journey. And then you'll go back down through it when it's time for the second coming. And Aquaman couldn't handle these waters. He couldn't handle what lives in the waters above the heavens either. Uh, you'll go through these waters faster than Aquaman and then through space much faster than the Silver Surfer. And that is if you don't just teleport back and forth. Maybe you'll, you'll do that. The clouds themselves could be a teleportation device for us because Revelation 1-7 says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. And then 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So that is our supernatural glorified bodies that you're going to be in when you reign as a king on the earth in God's game of thrones. You can be a king in God's game of thrones. The Bible says, 2 Timothy 2, 12, if we suffer... We shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. So if you run a reign as a king on the earth in God's game of thrones in this supernatural glorified body, make sure that you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ before it's entirely too late. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He shed his blood. He was buried and he rose again the third day. If you want to be saved, put your trust on the Lord Jesus Christ to be your payment for every sin you've ever committed and will commit. Come to him right now, the best way you know how. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.